Yeah, so I was pleased to present uh, the first data. It's an interim analysis of what's called Haven 7. Uh, this is a uh, multi-center study investigating the use of an approved drug, emicizumab, in infants with severe hemophilia A. Uh, this group of patients is a, um, a treatment gap for us as treaters of hemophilia. The tr traditional therapies that are used for infants with uh, hemophilia has been intravenous infusions of factor VIII replacement therapies. This is particularly challenging in infants because of the challenges with venous access. Many infants to facilitate this have needed to have central venous access devices, which introduces a whole nother set of potential complications. And if we look uh, when do infants typically get placed on factor VIII prophylaxis, it's usually not until after the first year of life. So that leaves the first uh, 12 months as a treatment gap where infants are usually just treated on demand and they're at risk of bleeding. And we know in this uh, group of infants there's a particular uh, manifestation of bleeding in severe hemophilia of intracranial hemorrhage which can be potentially devastating for uh, an infant. So emicizumab has an opportunity to close this treatment gap. There were infants uh, who participated in other phases of the clinical development program for uh, for, for emicizumab, uh, but the community have re requested this study to address some additional uh, questions that remain. The first one is what levels can be achieved with this uh, bispecific uh, monoclonal antibody in the youngest infant group? So we wanted to evaluate that. Secondly, this bispecific antibody, to mimic the action of factor VIII, it binds to factor VIII, or sorry, it binds to factor IX and to factor X. And uh, infants in the earliest few months after birth actually have lower levels of factor IX and factor X. So there was some question of what the efficacy would be in this age group. And the third point was, again, because the antibody binds to factor IX and factor X, would this change the levels of factor IX and factor X in the infants? So uh, the population of infants that were recruited were between birth up through 12 months of age. Uh, the uh, mean age of the infants uh, was uh, just about five months, but actually just under half of the infants were less than three months of age. They were all uh, loaded uh, with uh, emicizumab with traditional uh, loading doses, and then they were all on the same maintenance regimen of three milligrams per kilogram every two weeks. And then uh, they continued that for a planned follow-up in the first phase of 52 weeks of follow-up. We had sufficient exposure to uh, emicizumab in, to set up the interim analysis, and actually the mean follow-up uh, was uh, about 42 weeks. So what we observed in the trial, so first of all addressing the plasma levels that were achieved. Uh, the infants actually had plasma levels of between 60 and 65 micrograms per ml. This is actually higher than has been observed in other Haven pro programs with other ages, including pediatrics and adults. And it's actually even a little bit higher than other infants that were part of some of those other trials. We did observe that there was a gradual increase in the levels from shortly after uh, birth through six months of age when it stabilized. The second question related to the efficacy, given that infants tend to have at least for several months, have lower levels of factor IX and factor X. And the efficacy readout for this trial were bleed events. We captured both all bleeding events as well as treated bleeding events, and then we also categorized bleeds whether they were spontaneous, whether they were uh, trauma or procedural uh, related, and also whether specifically they were joint bleeds. And what we observed overall, for all bleeds, whether they required a treatment or not, the annualized bleed rate in these infants was only 1.9 bleeds per year. And then if we look at the uh, number of bleeds that required a treatment event, the annualized bleed rate was actually only 0.4. So this is actually quite good efficacy uh, in this group of infants. 
even beyond that, if we look at the proportion of patients that uh, did not require uh, any treated bleeds, it was 78% of the infants. And then further, 42% of the infants had no bleeding at all on emicizumab. So I think this nicely demonstrates the efficacy. Even beyond this, remember we uh, discussed the risk of intracranial hemorrhage in this population of infants. We did not have a single intracranial hemorrhage event amongst the population of infants followed so far. We did look at factor 9 and factor 10 levels in the plasma and there was no change uh, in the levels from baseline after they were placed on emicizumab. Uh, we also looked at safety signals, and there were no new safety signals identified uh, uh, within the trial that we did not already uh, come to expect for individuals who are on uh, emicizumab. Most common attributable adverse event were uh, local injection site reactions, uh, which did not cause any patients to withdraw from the trial or stop using the drug.